Hello and welcome to the first episode of Let's Create Something. My name is Michael and today's topic is 10 Essential Adobe Illustrator Tips. If you are aiming for a clean vector style, try creating as few points as possible and use the handles to get the curvature right. Imagine your shape as being a tiny planet and you are driving around it. Look out for the peaks and valleys from that point of view. That's the way you place your points. This way you get clean curves but also a very flexible and easy to edit illustration when it comes to tweaks or feedback later on. Don't worry too much on getting everything perfect at the first click. You can always come back and refine the position of your points and your handles after finishing the line. Sometimes you just realize that you chose a bad position for a point after dragging out the handles. If you want to save some cleanup time later on, just hold down space while the mouse button is still down and drag the point to a more suitable position. Let go of space to gain control over the handles again. This way you can continue drawing your path without leaving the pen tool. The curvature tool has become a good alternative to the pen tool when it comes to creating smooth round curves. Just click on the hills and valleys of your shape and it will create an even curve. Double click if you want to create a corner point. And again, hold down space to move a point on the fly without leaving the tool. To give this illustration some inky style, I use the width tool. Choose it from your tools or press shift W. You can use it anywhere on your curve, but it works best when you use it directly where your points are at. Just click and drag to adjust the width of your line. When it gets tricky to select the right line, hold down Ctrl and double click the line of your choice to isolate it. When you're finished, double click outside the line to leave isolation mode again. The big difference to just choosing a generic brush is that you have full control over the position and amount of weight you're adding to the line. In case you want to get rid of your custom weighting, select the line you'd like to edit, go to the stroke window and choose uniform in the profile drop down menu at the bottom. Rounding corners has never been easier. After creating a shape, you get these circular controllers next to your points. Just click and drag them and see the magic unfolding. Best part is that it's not limited to generic base shapes only. It also works on your custom paths. You can do it on all points at the same time, as shown before, or use the direct selection tool, also known as the white arrow, to just manipulate selected points on their own. Once you add it to your common workflow, it becomes a huge time saver, especially when creating icons or logos. In the last example, you see how I use it on combined paths to create a light bulb icon in just a few clicks. When I'm working with colors, I define them right from the start. Just double click the fill color and pick the color you want to use. Now, at your swatches window, click the new swatch icon. Make sure global is checked. Because only objects filled with a global color will inherit any changes you will do on the swatch later on. For this illustration, I already got four defined global colors, as you can see by the white corner at the swatch. There are a couple of ways to change them. My favorite is to choose the color by double clicking the fill color, holding down Alt and drag the color onto the swatch, which instantly is replaced. As it is a global color, the illustration will be updated accordingly. Just in case you jumped headfirst into illustrating without defining global color swatches, don't worry. Just select everything by hitting Ctrl A, go over to your swatches window and click the little folder icon. Make sure Selected Artwork and Convert Process to Global are selected. Finally, click OK. And voila! You got all colors used in the artwork as global swatches. Yeah.
Sometimes you get a feedback like, could you just make all lines a bit thinner? That can end in tedious tweaking of many lines, especially when working on something like a blueprint with a lot of different line weights. So here's the trick. Duplicate the object, hit Ctrl K and make sure scale strokes and effects is checked. Confirm by hitting Enter. Enable Smart Guides by hitting Ctrl U. Now scale the object down until you like the weights of the lines. Hit Ctrl K again, uncheck scale strokes and effects this time and confirm. Last but not least, scale the object up again until the smart guides give you feedback that you are at the same scale as your original object. And voila, we adjusted all line weights at once. Of course this works in both ways. If you want thicker lines, just scale up instead of down in the first step. When you are using a drawing tablet to sketch an illustrator, the join tool comes in very handy. Just let lines you want to combine overlap each other. After finishing your drawing, select the join tool. Now click and scrub on the overlapping lines to combine them. I grouped that part of the head so I can isolate it by double clicking it. That way I won't combine paths which I want to stay separate. For cleaning the rest of the overlapping lines up, I use the scissors tool. It's not as quick as the eraser tool or the new shaper tool, but it's the most accurate one. The eraser often messes up your curves and the shaper tool leaves you with a lot of unusable combined shapes after expanding. To finish this one up, I refine the illustration using the width tool. Creating complex circular shapes becomes a lot easier when you know how to use the pattern brush. Above these examples you see the segments of each pattern brush created to make them. Let's create the first one. I quickly built myself a guiding object to snap to using the smart guides. Then I draw the segment. Just pay attention that the start and end points are on the same height, otherwise it won't repeat seamlessly. Select your segment, open the brush window. Click the new brush icon, choose pattern brush and hit OK. Just leave everything on default for now and confirm by clicking OK again. Create a circle and apply the brush to it. Double click your brush and fine tune the settings until you like what you see, then confirm again. Click apply to strokes so your changes will take effect on the circle. To convert the brush back into a path, select the object and go to the object menu there you click Expand Appearance. But each segment is a separate path now. To fix this, select them all and hit Ctrl J to connect them. That's it. You got a shape now which you can fill, edit and manipulate to create your badges and seals of any kind. And that's it. I hope you learned something new today. If you have questions or have an addition to the list, let me know in the comments. If you would like to see more like this, subscribe to the channel, leave a like or follow me on Twitter and Twitch. Thanks for watching and happy illustrating.